Yes. What's up? Jay here, aka Feel It, bringing you a walkthrough of Random by Beat Surfing. I've loved this plugin for a little over a year now, but they've just released a new update with some incredible new features, so I figured let's dive in. As usual, we'll start from the top and work our way down. So first things first, your settings tab is tucked away up here at the top left hand corner with all the usuals. We can map our MIDI CC here. So for example, if we have a modulation wheel on a MIDI keyboard or something, we can decide what parameter that affects. The team have also hidden a really nice feature where you can share the visuals of the plugin via a Siphon server using this screen sharing tab here. Very cool. And lastly, you can scale the UI larger or smaller using this slider. Alternatively, we can just drag it from the bottom right hand side here. Next, we have our presets where we can save a sound that we've created or we can load user presets or the great factory sounds that are being made by the beat surfing team. Now, this is a big new feature that they've added in this update. It's a drag to export. This button basically turns the last note that you played into a WAV file and allows you to drag it into your door. So for example, So with this feature, we no longer need to resample or bounce in place or freeze and flatten. We can just chop things up straight from the box right there or make our own instruments if you want to use it across other platforms like MPC or Push, for example. And last but not least up here, we have the matter. So there are 16 unique platforms here upon which to build our sound. And each one has its own timbre and texture and of course its own unique visualizer, which is pretty cool. I'll cycle through a few of them throughout this walkthrough so we can get a taste of what they do. Now let's move on to our main parameters. And arguably the biggest one is this randomize button right here. Hitting this will randomize a ton of parameters both behind the scenes and within our UI here. Now there's a few things to mention. Firstly, this envelope here is not affected by the randomizer or the XY path for that matter. So if you created a nice sound and you want to keep that envelope shape as it is, nothing's going to change it without you telling it to. Secondly, this deviant slider allocates how much or how little you want everything to be randomized by. So if you quite like the sound that you're at and you just want to change a little bit of that timbre or the texture, then keep this quite low and hit that button. <laughs> But if you want something new and extreme, crank it up and see where that takes you. Next, we have these toggles here that lock these specific parameters in place. That means that if I engage, nothing that I do with the randomizer button or the XY pad, which we'll go through later, will affect that parameter. So unless I change that manually, it's gonna stay as it is. Now this happens automatically if I change that parameter as well. So it's unlocked at the moment. If I go and tweak it, you'll see that the lock engages and that means that nothing's gonna change unless I tell it to. Now lastly, we have this instability parameter up here. Imagine your note is on a log and the higher this parameter is pushed, the further your note wobbles on that log from the original position. This helps to keep nice and natural and human feeling, especially if you're playing a lot of notes right after each other. Very cool. But your original sound will always be saved, so if you pull it back down, you'll have it where you left off. Now underneath this randomize button, you've got the undo and redo. Very handy, it works across the board, so even in the XY pad, if you change something and you press undo, it's gonna go back to where you were before. This even works on the matter selector, so if you're changing your matter, and you wanna go back to where you were, you just press undo. It is worth mentioning that, if you change your preset, you cannot undo that. So if you've made a sound that you like and you go up here and you press on a new preset, you will lose that sound unless you've saved your project or the preset as a user preset, of course. Next, we have this envelope here and it does exactly what it says on the tin. Attack, decay and sustain, and release. Regular ADSR. I know the team put in a lot of work to put this in here. And I, for one, am thankful because it helps a lot with sound design and for live performance. Next, we can choose whether this envelope is engaged or not. So if it's engaged, as I said before, it stays locked in place. No other parameters change this. And it maintains its effects no matter what else you do within the UI. So for example, if I create quite a nice short sound here, no matter what I do, it's going to stay that way. Even if I randomize. 
again, very useful for taming the output for us. However, if we disengage it, we can expect that raw uncaged random that we've come to know and love. And that means that we can expect those gnarled, more extreme changes to take place when we're messing with parameters and finding that perfect sound. Now here's another new feature from this update and the team didn't just go and add a glide function and be done with it. No, of course not. So we can choose to have each note re-triggered or we can turn that off to have everything run through as one smooth note. But here's where it gets interesting. We have the glide time for when a note is played above the current note and a different glide time for when a note is played below the current note. That means that if we want to, for example, we could have a really long glide going up and a really short one coming down. Or the other way around. It just gives us some more fun sound design and melodic possibilities. Now here's another interesting feature. We have this glide mix, and this basically allows you to decide how far or how close to the next note you want that glide to begin. So for example, if I was to play a note an octave above the note that I'm currently playing, and I was to set this glide mix to about 50%, for all of those music nerds out there, that would probably start at around a fifth in between the current note and the next note. So halfway between, and then it would glide up from there. Let me show you. As opposed to if you had it all the way, in which case you would start from the note that you first pressed to the second note. And we can go more extreme with this so that it starts even closer to the second note. And we can increase or decrease that time to make it more noticeable. Another cool way to just mess with that sound design in general. Now before the update, we were used to this stress parameter predominantly affecting the decay of our sound. Now we can keep it as it was if we disengage this envelope and it'll be exactly as we're used to. So having it turned up will increase the decay and having it turned down will decrease the decay. However, with the envelope engaged, it now only affects the modulation decay. And with some sounds that might be more noticeable than with others, because number one, many of those parameters are happening behind the scenes. And number two, we might already be choking that sound with the envelope. Next, we have spike. Now the team describes this as a sliding scale between warmness and harshness, which I really like. So pump this up to get some more gritty, saturated sounding tones, or pull it back to make something more subtle. Now, if the spike is affecting the harshness of a sound, I would say the color is affecting the brightness, but it's definitely not just a high cut filter. You'll hear that when you pull it right down, you get some more rumbly, earthy sounding textures. And when you push it up to the top, you get a lot more body throughout the whole sound. And even when it's at the bottom, you're still getting some of those more subtle top end frequencies coming through. Now, if you've ever played with a real or emulated guitar amp, you'll know what this presence does. Utilizing a combination of EQ, saturation, and amplitude, it just pushes that sound to the front or pulls it back. Now, in textbook terms, this bleed parameter is changing the amount of resonators that a sound is being put through. In practical terms, it adds a bit of space and dimension to your sound, and it also pushes it out into the stereo field. Now this fluid parameter affects the decay of those bleed resonators. Depending on the sound that you're working with, that might be more noticeable or less noticeable, and especially if we have that envelope engaged or disengaged. So if you want some truly wild and beautiful sounds off the back of this, I'd recommend disengaging your envelope, pushing your stress up, and sitting back while you mess with the XY pad and the different matters. Next, we've got this velocity sensitivity. If this is pulled right down, 
Whatever velocity you play into the plugin won't make a difference. However, as you pull it up, it changes not only the amplitude of the sound, but also the timbre of it. And that gives it a more human, natural feel. So when you're playing softer notes, it feels like it's playing softer. And when you're playing hard enough, it has a bit more of an abrasive edge. And lastly, we have the gain parameter, which does what it says on the tin. It affects the global amplitude coming out of the plugin. Now we do have a handy little toolbox down here, which tells you exactly what you're looking at and what the parameter that you're working with does. And now we're on to one of the most innovative and exciting things that I've come across in a plugin for a very long time. Similarly to the randomize button, this XY pad allows you to affect a ton of parameters both behind the scenes and within our UI here. So clicking and dragging this around the pad will allow you to affect the tone, timbre and texture of your sound. Now remember, you can lock the stress, spike and bleed in place if you don't want them to change. And if you do, that'll just affect some of the things that are happening behind the scenes. The rest of the parameters in the UI are not affected by the randomizer or the XY pad at all. So your envelope, your glide, your color, your presence, or your velocity sensitivity all stay the same no matter what you do to the rest of the plugin. And that concludes this walkthrough. I hope it's been helpful. If you don't have random yet, go and grab it. Try it out and its sister plugin, Random Metal. And Beat Surfing have a ton of other cool products, so go try them out. Both the team and myself love hearing what you create, so send some stuff over and let us know what you think of Random and this incredible new update. Let's go.